I'm just starting to that. All right, it is 7 a.m. and I'd like p.m. <laughs> 7 a.m. somewhere. <laughs> uh, it is 7 p.m. and I'd like to call to order the Rose Township Planning Commission meeting for February 6th. We'll call attendance, please. Mrs. Young? Here. Mrs. Stanzig? Here. Mr. Noble? Yes. Mr. Marr? Here. Mrs. Lynn? Here. 
Mr. Boland? Here. Mr. Brooks? Here. All right, we have the agenda before us, and a pretty full agenda for approval of modification to the agenda. I recommend approval of the agenda as presented. A second. I'll second. Second by Noble. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, approve the agenda. We have the minutes from the meeting November 7th. I'll make a motion that the uh, minutes, meeting minutes of November 7th, 2019 be approved. Yes, submitted. I'll second. Second. Okay. second from Mr. Boland. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, approve the minutes as submitted. All right. Um, got a full house tonight, and I want to first say thank you very much for taking time to come out this evening. Usually we have about two people in the audience, so for us this is a very full house. And because of that, I'd like to just take a minute to go through with you, this may or may not be your first planning commission meeting, so I'd like to take just a minute to go through the process. Because with this number of people, we want to give everyone a fair chance to speak, but it's also important to understand kind of how what we are here and what we do as a planning commission and how your input is valued and important to us. So with that, we have a couple things before us this evening. Both of them are special land use requests and site, uh, site uh, plan reviews. Those are two separate things. The special land use request are, is a set of criteria that we look at that says, is the request fitting for the zoning of that area? So that's one criteria and set of criteria that we look at for that part. The other half of that is the site plan review. So that's the details, that's the prints and things like that that says, okay, is this thing appropriate? Is it being built to our ordinances and to the related specifications and so on? So we will vote on both of those items. Um, at that point, we can take various actions. Um, in the meantime, we will be looking for input. When it comes time for the public hearing to occur, the first thing that will occur is our planner, Brian Borden, will come up and he'll introduce the request that's being made. Then the applicant will come forward and they'll have five minutes to present their application and a little bit about what they're trying to do there. At that point, we'll open it up to the public hearing. What we request from any of you that would like to make public comment is that you approach the podium so that it has a mic on it so we can capture everything is recorded and that way your comments are made part of the public record. So it's important for you to speak clearly and be present at the podium. When you approach the podium, please state your name and your address for the record. And then we also ask that you keep your comments to three minutes or less. That will allow time for everyone to make comment. The other thing I'd ask is that if you can, we, we certainly want to provide everyone the opportunity to speak freely, but if you find that some of the comments are repetitive, I would ask that you limit restating already comments that have been made by others just in the sake of time. So with that, um, again, I want to thank you, all of you for attending this evening and being part of this session. This is the beauty of public and uh, local government. So again, it's really important for all of us as citizens of Rose Township to participate, and we thank you for that. So with that, um, I'm looking for simply comments on the agenda itself. So this is not the public hearing where we're talking about the actual items themselves, just the agenda. And hearing none, move on to the item number six, which is on our agenda night, the communications. So in our packet, we all as commissioners receive the road commission report from Oakland County. There were some additional correspondence that have been submitted here this evening. Um, some of those are written comments from people regarding the subject matter. I will read those publicly uh, when we go to the public uh, hearing and the public comments. So I will read those. There was, a, there was one submitted regarding the kennel, and there were two or three submitted regarding the um, car showroom. And then lastly, we, have, we received a report from the North Oakland County Fire Association in their review of the request from Mr. McDonald 
regarding the uh, auto showroom. Okay, so those were communications that are added, were added, and again, I will read any of the written comments as part of the public comments this evening. We have no standing committee, so thus there are no committee reports. And now we move to the public hearing. So once again, I'll restate just real quickly the kind of the rules of engagement here. We have three minutes to make comments. Let's be respectful of one another. Um, please approach the podium, state your name and your address. And um, again, we welcome and thank you for your comments. So the first item on our agenda this evening is Christopher Lasco of 1245 Rose Center Road, parcel number 06-18-326-005, zoned agricultural, is requesting section 38-582, paragraph 18, special land use with site plan for a kennel at 1245 Rose Center Road. And with that, I turn over the floor to Mr. Brian Borden from SafeBuilt, who is our township planner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, do you guys want me to go up and use the podium? If you would, please. Yeah, Thank you. Have this many people, I may as well. Mike, did you just open the public hearing? Yep. Yes. 706. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, so the first case before you this evening, um, this is a, a request that was originally presented and discussed with staff um, under the, really the the idea behind it was as a kennel within an agriculturally zoned pro uh, property that is a lot of special land use approval. There are also a host of use conditions that go along with that particular use. Um, it, the way the application came in, and you'll note this in my review letter, uh, and I know that Davis had some follow-up conversation with the petitioner, uh, but the description that was provided really strayed from that of a, of a typical kennel as defined in your ordinance. Uh, and it definitely raised a lot of concerns on my end um, as, a, as, as a reviewing body in that they really are incorporating a lot more commercial-like activities uh, than a traditional kennel would. Uh, for instance, the daycare aspect as well as the grooming aspect, which are kind of two in particular that jumped out at me. So um, I, I really don't think that the description that's been provided in the application before you uh, is even an allowable use, in my opinion. Um, I do think that there is the potential that a, a traditional kennel could fit at that property. Uh, it has sufficient size to qualify under your ordinance, uh, and some of the um, albeit it's, it's really a rough sketch drawing as opposed to more of a site plan drawing. Um, some of the details within that sketch do match up with some of the kennel standards in your ordinance. However, as currently submitted, um, I really don't believe that any favorable action could be taken on it. Um, I do, again, it was my understanding that uh, staff had spoken with the petitioner and I believe uh, they had some intention of essentially uh, requesting a tabling tonight so that they could modify their application, uh, take out the commercial components, uh, and modify it such that it would fit better within your ordinance and provide the additional detail that's needed. Um, that's the gist of it. I can get into a lot more detail if you want, but I wanted to kind of cover that at a high level because really, again, as it's been submitted, uh, I don't believe it's approvable at this stage. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate that. And with that, I open the floor to any member of the public that would like to approach and make comment. Got the applicant. I'm sorry. Thank you, Dave. Please. I'm sorry. Just ahead. Hello. Hi there. My name is Chris Laxo. This is my fiance, Bobby Joe. We live at one two four five. West Rose Center Road. I would like to ask that the board uh, to table the decision so we can have some time to address the concerns uh, sent by the Planning Commission. We are looking to have a kennel. We're not looking to have a commercial business. That's not what we were after. Um, we did, we purchased the property. Um, we had many decisions to make before we had purchased it. So we reached out to the township to find the regulations. We were put in contact with Dave Plews. We explained what we wanted to do and given some guidelines. 
So with that, we have friends and family that live in the township. They all had good things to say, and we had the regulations. We felt we could meet, so we went on our way. We set off to find a place that we could call home and start our dreams. We found a place, so again, we called Dave just to make sure that the requirements were met, and they were. So we purchased the place we call home now and submitted the plans. After reviewing the paperwork from the planning commissioner, there are some concerns. So we would like a chance to submit a modified proposal to address the concerns. We're willing to work with the planning manager and the township to address the concerns. We want to be good neighbors, and after talking to Dave again, we understand there's some new regulations coming down with downsizing the size of the kennels to 20 dogs. We'd be more than willing to work with that. So hopefully you'd be able to table the decision so we can get this modified proposal put together. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I open the floor to the public. You're Sorry. Um, my name is Lisa Ferguson. I live on um, 19350 Sage Lane. I almost forgot my address. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> Um, I have grown up in Rose Township. I've been here for, oh my gosh, 48 years now. Um, and we uh, have a house, obviously, on Rose, um, Rose Center, or, sorry, Sage Lane. So we are actually your uh, backyard neighbors. <laughs> so since we are backyard neighbors uh, and we um, are separated by a pond, which is a water area we can hear activity at times from a lot of houses just from the water um, transferring the sound around um, I guess I'm not sure on what the um, when you propose to have a kennel what is necessary um, well these dogs have to be in, contained in a facility or are we talking outside kennels they're going to be inside a foam so you, it'll be noise restricted it's going to be standards to what Rose Township would want if not even more than what Rose Township is asking they will not be outside left unattended they are going to be within Rose Township's timeline um, I don't recall the time that they had us because there's been so much going on um, and obviously we haven't seen any of the site proposals, so I know that your property stretches all the way to Rose Center Road and all the way back, and your proposal for your building would be where in conjunction to that? To Rose Center Road and it's where the house is? House. So it would be by the house. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with our property, but our, our mm -hmm. driveway goes Very up. familiar. Because I know Mrs. Straight. Hayes. <laughs> okay. So our driveway goes straight up. So yep. to the left of the garage, yep. that's where we were going to have it. Okay, and that's, okay, and so that's just, that's one of the concerns. So being on a main road like that, when you have to take the dogs out to be able to run them or anything like that, you know, they're not going to be close to a main road or anything like that. I mean, like, what is the proposal for that? The dogs will either be on a leash or they will be inside a fenced-in area. That's one of the requirements is that it's fenced-in. They will not be free-roaming. They don't. So however many dogs, is it there like a certain square footage area that is mandated for the maintenance and the prosperity of the animals and all that? Okay. All right. I don't know if there's... I'm not sure if you're familiar, but not only do we have to follow Rose Township guidelines, but we have to follow Old Township guidelines. Okay. So between the both of them, we're going to do anything unless both of them guys give us permission. And is there a um, like an American Kennel Society that has guidelines too, so that you can be certified, or how does the, how does that work, typically? Not that we're aware of, no. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess that's all the questions, Donna. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nancy White. I live at 19300 Sage Lane. I'm at the end of the road, and you are, I own the water that you're, you abut. 
and um, I guess I have a couple questions. Number one, um, in terms of resale, because I don't intend to stay on that property forever, even though I've just invested a sizable amount of money to improve it. Having dogs barking and the fact that I have horses and that I ride and that is how I make a living, um, I don't want to get injured and um, I need to know um, sort of like what hours are your dogs going to be out? Is it going to be constant barking? Because um, I've lived in 33 places and everywhere I've ever lived, having a kennel anywhere near you devalues your property significantly. And so I guess for the neighbors, we all want to know, like what does that look like for us where we've invested a, in a huge amount of money into a place that we thought would be a good investment and now I don't want to squash your dream, but I don't want to have my property devalued or I don't want to be able to ride my horses or be out in my backyard or on my pond and be constantly bothered by barking dogs and the noise that that creates. Um, well, there is a kennel company right on the corner of Rose Town, or Rose Center Road and Hickory Ridge. She's been there for quite a while. Um, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, she's been there for a while, and as far as I know, we've been... Are you talking down past the gas station on yes. the right-hand side? Yeah. So, upon looking for this house, we've done extensive research. Um, we have not come across any problems living next door to a kennel, living next door to a horse. Well, I would never personally buy a home if there was a kennel, and I did look at property like that. Just for me, it, it endangers me. Okay. It, it all, most of us on Sage Lane have horses, and for us to feel free to be able to go out and ride and feel like we can be safe on our property, especially with the way that the sound carries, and the fact that we all love dogs, we're animal lovers, so it would be difficult for us to say, you know what, keep your dogs quiet, because we're going to ride our horses and, and we don't want to get injured, because that's not fair to you, but at the same time, your dog's barking incessantly is going to be a problem for us as well. It just doesn't seem like it's a great fit for the area. So with us and our minimum requirement of having 20 dogs, for example, we are going to do beyond, do everything in our power that those dogs are not going to be heard outside of our facility. When we went into the decision of making, when we went, when we made the decision to do the dog kennel, we did it for the love of the dogs. We want to provide a safe environment and a safe place for our residents, our clients, and our neighbors to bring their animals. But they're going to have to have outside time, yes? They are, but they're not going to be left unattended. They are all. Well, you can't control how, how much Excuse a dog barks. Excuse me, Mrs. White. I, I have to, right. um, we have to put some decorum okay. on three this. My three minutes is up, sorry. No, no, I, but I do want to, as a, as a planning commission, we look at the ordinances that are in place. Right. There are certain uses within the township that are rights for all citizens within the township. What it, we have to avoid in this public discussion is debate well, I think and putting, putting each other in a debating sort of, sort of way. How do we get the answers then that we need to determine if it's going to be something that we feel like is going to be feasible for us as homeowners in the area as well, that have already invested in this township and would like to stay and make this our homes? What I'm saying is for this evening, for the sake of the public comment, they are just that, public comments. You're free to make your comments. But what I want to avoid for this evening, please, is debate, putting two people... No, I understand, but how do we get the, the answers to the questions that we that then we Then you want. can approach our any member of the township board or our planner. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So please, if you come forward, let's please keep our comments in the form of comments and not putting each other in a debate sort of way. Mr. Chair, can I just make one introduction real quickly? Just for the, the neighbor's understanding, uh, the ordinance does have a limitation uh, that, that essentially states that the dogs must be kept inside the building from 10 p.m. to 9 a.m. 
So that is a requirement. So during those hours, they would be required to be kept inside. Yeah. That's a requirement. Of your so for any of you, you're free to approach Mr. Plu uh, outside of this meeting, and he can review with you those ordinances because there are clearly a set of rules and guidelines under which kennels are to be conducted. There's also a set of guidelines by the county, the county, the health division very tightly regulates kennels. So all of that is done. Um, but again, I, my, my, I'm making my comments to keep the nature of this meeting this evening um, collaborative and cooperative, and we do appreciate your comments. But I'd like to avoid debate between parties this evening. Thank you. Floor is open. Good evening. Good evening. Jim Cleveland, 12030 Caldwaller Road. So we're just behind Sage Lane. Um, and we've lived here for four years now. Uh, my main concern has nothing to do with the dogs or the business itself, but has the impact on traffic and the road been considered? We need to know how many cars, how much traffic would this business add to traveling on Rose Center Road. It's already a dirt road in that between uh, Rose Corners and White Lake Road, it's dirt. It deteriorates very rapidly. Right now, it's like the surface of the moon down there with all the, with all the snow and thaw, thaw, thawing and freezing and refreezing. And it's very rough. And the more traffic that the road gets, the quicker it deteriorates. It gets muddy in the summer when it rains. Has the commission looked at the road, and is the road capable of handling the additional traffic load that this development would might pose? Do we know what even what that is? So, so travel studies on public roads are handled by the Road Commission of Oakland County. Mm -hmm. In this particular case. As the, application, the, as the application is requested in its current form, they're looking at up to 30 dogs. So potentially you could have up to 30 vehicles, additional travel to and from that mm -hmm. site. That's probably unlikely, seeing how there's usually overnights and things like that. But, mm -hmm. that, but as far as impact studies on roads, that's not something that we look at at a local level. Mm. For sites like this, okay. Even though even though it's a township road, it is a county road. It is a county road. Yes. All right. All right. Well, again, that's just our general concern: is that we've increased traffic. What is being going to be done to make sure that the road is capable of handling it? Thank you. Floor is open. One last request. Floor is still open. I'm uh, Zach with the, the Sage Lane. What, what was your name? Zach. Zach. Yep. Zach. Uh, 19430 Sage Lane. Uh, question for you as a cattle owner, operator, if a dog gets loose, Bites my child, dog has a sickness, now I have a $100,000 hospital bill for my child. Am I stuck with that? Are you guys stuck with that? Well, we have insurance, but the way that we have it set up, the dogs can't get out of there's a, there's a fence that will be six feet that you can't Nothing's guaranteed, <laughs> but true. just an idea. We're for... going to take every precaution to make sure right. that the dogs are safe. Right. We don't, our number one concern is that the dogs are safe. They're well maintained, they're well behaved. We have strict rules before that our clients can even bring them to our home. We do meet and greets, 
before we even say, yes, we will watch your dog. If they show any aggression whatsoever with our own dogs, or even with us, we tell them, I'm sorry, we are not the, the kennels for you. We, we can't take that chance. Not only do we have our own personal dogs, we have birds that are, th that's my life. So if those dogs injure anything on our property, I could only imagine how it would be if, if the dog got out and injured anyone in our neighborhood. So the precautions that we're taking for our own individual self is we're extending that beyond outside of our household and outside of the, outside of our kennels also. Just for a thing for the board to look at is you're going to throw commercial zoning into all these residential areas. No, just. I know everyone has kids down our street, everyone, all the neighbors, I'm sure, grandkids, whatever. But um, on that, another thing is the smell, you know, uh, how are you going to dispose of the waste, that sort of thing. Um, oh, garbage. for your time. And the floor remains open. And this will be final call for any public comment regarding this request. Hearing none, I close the public hearing at 728. And with that, at this point, we usually have discussion amongst the commission members themselves. But this evening, um, the situation is a little bit unique in that the application that is before us is, I would say, grossly um, incomplete. The kennel owners themselves have suggested that we postpone or table this discussion until they're uh, allowed to resubmit their application with provided detail. Some of those things that are missing, um, number one, on the, the application is proof of ownership. That must be provided and it must be notarized. That was not part of our packet. There was no detailed site plan showing actual building location, fencing, landscaping in relationship to either the home or the property lines itself. A dot on a map is not sufficient to show us the relationship of the structure. The construction methods for the facility were not shown. There was a drawing or simply a package from an art, but there's nothing showing the construction methods, the floor drainage, which is part of the scope of the ordinance, the slope of the facility, the wall and window details, lighting, and just general construction detail. There was no plan for ingress and egress of vehicles coming in and out of the site. And I would also recommend and suggest to Dave that we get a review by the um, North Oakland County Fire Association on the ingress and egress as well. There's no plan for parking. There's no plan for noise abatement. There's no plan for landscaping. And there are no details related to the fencing. The ordinance requires commercial fencing in the form of cyclone fencing. The application stated it would be wood fence. Therefore, I make a motion to postpone any debate or action on this application until we receive a more complete application from the applicant. I second. So 
We have a motion to table. We have a second. Any debate? Any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to mention that it also had mentioned about cats, and there was nothing, you know, like in the plan, there's no area for cats or anything, so that either needs to be removed or explained. Okay. okay. So, thank you. Any other comments? Discussion? Okay, we have a motion to postpone. We have a second. And with that, I'd like a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Lynn? Yes. Mrs. Young? Yes. Mr. Bowen? Yes. Mr. Maurer? Yes. Mrs. Stanzik? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. So with that, motion carries to postpone action on the request by Christopher Lasco at 1245 Rose Center Road for special land use and site plan for a kennel. All right. Get my bearings here. Just want to check this. Miller, did you receive uh, the public comment from Mr. Greenan regarding this matter to make that part of the record? Yeah, some things, items from Dave this afternoon. Um, yeah, John and Chris Greenan. Okay. So as long as you have their comments to me, made part of the public record. I did. Were we to read it? Did you want to read it? Or I did. Well, I tabled it, but I can read this just so that it's part of the public record. This is from John and Chris Greenan regarding kennel at 1245 Rose Center Road. It says, how many individual kennel areas for housing animals at one time? The request is 30. The location of the kennel, how will noise level be managed properly? Noise echoes and travels in the area. If kennel is placed on the northern side of the property, it is closest to our home. Will boarded animals be leashed at all times, if not in a kennel or fenced in area? There are no dividing fences for the protection of myself, visitors, or visiting dogs at this time. Will cleanliness be a priority for kennel owners? Will there be, at a minimum, daily cleanup of animal excrement? And will kennel, kennel rules and regulations be enforced by county if proposed as accepted? After time, will someone from the county check to make sure guidelines are correctly followed? As a homeowner in close proximity, I would not want a kennel this close to me that is not maintained properly according to county guidelines. John and Chris Greenan, and they're at 1195 Rose Center Road. McDonald at 20015 Hickory Ridge Road, parcel ID number 06201001019, known as M&M Marathon, Zone C2 General Business District, is requesting Section 38-582, parentheses 22, Special Land Use and Site Plan for a new or used sales or showroom for automobiles. So with that, I'll turn over the floor to Mr. Borden. And... Thank you again, Mr. Chair. As noted, uh, this is another request for special land use and site plan review. Uh, in this case, it is a request for automobile sales within a C2 zoned property. Um, I'll start off, similar note, by stating that, uh, again, this, this submittal really lacked an accurate and detailed site plan. Um, there's, a, there's a survey drawing, 
uh, that really just depicts, it was originally intended as a land division, and it does depict a partial location of the building and the property itself, uh, but it does not include near the, the level of detail that a full site plan review would require for items such as parking, landscaping, lighting, signage, setbacks, et cetera. Um, so that's my starting point. Uh, with respect to the special land use considerations, um, you know, I, I dive into, uh, I mentioned the site plan at the outset, and while they are two separate items, they are definitely related items. And anytime we have a new special land use request on a previously developed property, it does provide the township with an opportunity to require site improvements or upgrades to certain site elements that uh, may not be up to current standards. So there are a handful of items that, again, we'd like to see some more detail on, um, but ultimately that's, that's up to the commission because this would be an opportunity to require some amount of improvement uh, if it is warranted and or necessary. Um, the other uh, really primary concern under the general special land use standards is I would like to get uh, from the applicant this evening um, on the record uh, and then depending on how this proceeds uh, something in writing to the township but there have been discussions uh, between the applicant and township staff that have described this really as uh, automobile sales but with a, a very strict limitation of two vehicles uh, is what was noted so it was my understanding that there were two vehicles and one staff person that would be utilizing the site uh, as, as for this particular business so uh, the submittal itself does not state that so again I would like that to be confirmed um, on the record this evening and, and if we do move forward I would like to see that put in writing as part of either an amended uh, application form or some type of documentation from the applicant. Because I do think um, for, you know, for the applicant and for the, the residents who are here for this particular case tonight, you know, I do think there's a, a big difference between opening this site up as, an, as a used car lot, if you will, and allowing somebody to sell no more than two vehicles at a time. Uh, out of a small office within this existing building. So as far as the impacts go, you know, I think the, the two are, are quite different. Two vehicles and a one-man operation uh, within an established commercial property, uh, I don't view as being that impactful. Uh, that being said, a used car lot with 100 vehicles and a sales staff and team of, you know, multiple people, upwards of a dozen, um, I, I don't think that's a good fit here. So that is one thing I definitely want to make sure we get cleaned up this evening. Um, as far as the use conditions go, or the specific use conditions in this particular case, um, one, one standard specific to automobile sales is tied to lighting. And I mentioned earlier we don't have a detailed lighting or a landscape or a detailed site plan, excuse me, identifying uh, or providing information with respect to uh, lighting. So that is something you, you may wish to request information on. Um, that being said, uh, I don't believe any new lighting is proposed as part of this project, uh, but it is something that, that might be worth looking at to ensure, again, that that standard is met. Uh, and then there is another item related to um, sort of signage and or attractive nuisances, if you will, uh, that oftentimes go with car lots. Um, and that is a requirement that there shall be no strings or flags, bare light bulbs, flashing illumination of any kind on the site. Uh, not that the applicant is proposing that, but I would like, again, on the record, I guess I'd like them to be aware of it and acknowledge that they would, uh, that they understand that that's a requirement and that they would not be uh, taking on any of those types of, um, you know, amenities, if you will. Probably not the right word, but <clears throat> from their perspective, perhaps it is. But uh, those types of marketing activities, sort of, again, the, the drawing attention to the site. Um, and again, uh, the site plan really is uh, a bit deficient. One of the items I was looking for detail on uh, is related to parking. Because obviously this is an existing commercial use. There's already a gas station convenience store here. Uh, I don't have a clear indication of whether that use already has sufficient parking and or a surplus of parking to accommodate uh, the additional spaces that would be needed if we're having two vehicles parked on site for sale 
plus one employee plus the potential of patrons coming to test drive, look at, purchase those vehicles. You know, we really do need to have upwards of four or five parking spaces uh, that are dedicated for this particular aspect of, of the use and of the property. So um, I would like to see some, some better delineation uh, with respect to the parking in particular. And through talking with uh, Township staff, it was also my understanding that there's a, um, I'll call it non-conforming because I, I don't know that it's, that it's not, uh, but there's a temporary sign sort of buried in the, the middle of the uh, two drive aisles that I believe did raise someone's concern, perhaps the, the fire authority, um, which I do believe they had requested that that be removed as part of this process. So again, as far as uh, site improvements related to a new special land use, uh, that in my opinion would be well within your authority as a planning commission to require removal of that particular sign. That's all I have right now, Mr. Chair, but I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you may have. We'll, uh, we'll wait till we open it up to them. I'll be here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, with that, the applicant has the floor. <clears throat> Good evening, Matt Novell on behalf of Chris and Anne Marie McDonald. Um, and just to be clear, I did submit a, did you receive the letter from my office? Mm -hmm. In addition to it, maybe you didn't see it. So in there, it definitely said your stipulations as far as, so Chris's business, he's, he has a location in Waterford. Now that he's got the, the gas station here in Rose Township, he, he, he sells one car a month, maybe. It's very, very narrow. Most are online sales. There is no sales staff. There will be no, you know, big balloons and lighting, none of that. Any stipulation we'd, we'd absolutely agree to, to sign off on. Um, I do want to just back up a little bit. Per the zoning uh, ordinance and table 38-111, uh, uh, we were under the impression that because it was an existing location um, that was not, you know, basically expanding the use of the existing gas station location. We didn't need to submit a formal new site plan, but a sketch. So we did submit a sketch that outlined uh, four or five parking spaces to be used for this. Um, but obviously if there's some landscaping that needs to be enhanced, we'd definitely participate with that. If, um, if there's lighting, we can work, the, work with the police department if that's a condition. But just the overall framework of the proposal is extremely narrow. Uh, his business sells cars online. There is no sales staff. There will be zero, you know, promotions, you know, marketing campaigns to drive traffic to there. Uh, it's it's onesie twosies cars once in a while, um, very limited. And whatever stipulation we would need to put on the record for the township for the neighboring population, we'd, we'd be more than willing to do that. Uh, and, and, and not to exceed, you know, whatever cap that may be. Um, we also received the uh, letter from the fire department. And um, I just had it here. And I agree the sign, uh, if it's okay with the township, it can just be right up against the building. It won't impede traffic. Um, it's a state requirement that a sign is needed. Um, as minimal and as, as less invasive as, as you guys are comfortable with, we're, we're comfortable with that. Um, and as far as the, the issue about fire lane, um, yeah, it'd be the, it, would be. Yeah, it's, it was, we were asking for, the application said between three to five parking spaces collectively between Chris, who already has his vehicle when he goes to the gas station for, for running the gas station, plus, you know, two or three to have cars parked there um, that would kind of rotate. So collectively with him as a staff member plus, you know, two or three. Uh, and I think there's about 25, 30 parking spaces at that location, <coughs> which is way more than the gas station needs per zoning. Um, so there is room. And uh, it just makes sense to kind of consolidate his business here. He's in the community, he's been here for years. Um, we also have uh, some neighbors' letters. Uh, we did ask for some cooperation from some of the community, and there's five or six um, 
neighbors that have approved I can submit to the township? To the clerk, please. So here's uh, four or five letters for some of the neighbors that understand the restriction and the narrow scope of this request. And um, that's about all I have. You know, Chris. Yeah, Chris McDonald, 20015 Hickory Ridge. Um, I'm my wife and I, Anne Marie McDonald, are the owners there at uh, M&M Marathon. Um, been there since 2015, from when we bought it from the Gibbards uh, Phil store. Um, just wanted to make sure I let everyone know that we have done improvements there, continue to do improvements there. Um, I would say do the right thing. I am, as Matt says. Um, I've had a dealer's license with my family since 1984. In Waterford, I need a spot to hang my license legally. I'm not looking to put cars on the grass out front and do have my buddies or this guy come over and do this or that. All I'm looking to do is do the right thing um, with my license, to hang my license there. As Matt explains, I am an online and auction guy. My business is a gas business. Um, it is cars as well. I own another gas station in Highland. Um, you can see how we take care of that as well. Um, I'm not looking to, as the gentleman said, to hang balloons and all that. I am strictly looking for a spot legally, uh, ordinance-wise, to hang my license. Um, have these couple spots there um, and make it where it's not really even noticeable that that's going on. If there would be cars there let alone because most of the stuff I do, again, is online auctions um, wholesale. Uh, uh, so I don't retail much at all. Um, again, I can just emphasize that I'm trying to do the right thing where it fits in, uh, in the right spot. And um, as I talk to Mr. Plews and things, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make that work out between the relationship between my, my business and the township. So uh, that's what I'm looking to do. And just one, just for a clarification, so he list an ad online for, you know, this 2010 GMC, right? Someone will contact that listing. They won't show up. They won't just show up because they'll just, they don't know where to show up to. It's just an online ad. So that triggers a response that maybe that person doesn't even go to the location. It could, he could take the car, which he has done, to other off-site locations. It, the, the foot traffic on this is going to be maybe one extra person in that location a month, maybe. And likely not even that. So um, it is very, very narrow. And whatever stipulations the townships requests to, uh, to put on that, we will do. But just the, the scope of it, it's not, it's, it's a car dealer license because it has to be, but it's not what everybody thinks as some, you know, very lights going everywhere, lots of foot traffic, lots of change. It's not even close to that. So that's all. Yeah, any questions or? If I could add real quick as well, there is no sales force. You're looking at them. Um, my wife and I have five kids. I can't afford a sales force. So um, there is no salesman there. There is no, uh, it, it's me. Um, so there is no other car parked for Joe Smith who works for me. To sell. That is not the case. There, I don't employ anyone. I'm the only one. So uh, I got, to got sure. one question. Sure. On this page here, it says the company has voted and approved the potential use of a small portion of the property to be leased to a company con to conduct minimal <coughs> automobile sales at the property. You're going to lease this this out to somebody else to, to run it? That's from M&M &M Marathon. A lot, the property owner is M&M &M Marathon, which is Chris and Amory. Right, that's so the company. That's that's the current gas station. The car dealer is technically Waterford Car Company because it's that's where it started in Waterford. So that memorandum is the is the landowner allowing it's the same people, it's, but it's two different companies. The landowner allowing that use in the building. That's the point of that resolution. There'll be no if, if that's misconstrued. There'll be no lease. There will be no third parties. It, it's Chris. Okay. It's, yeah. it's his. Right. It's it's Chris's gas station allowing Chris's single member. Yeah. There's no. There will be no. Because the way the way it, it read out, yeah, no, you're going to lease okay. it out to somebody else no. to run it. Yeah, that was submitted just so that la the, the landowner is different than the applicant. It's still Chris, but it's a different legal entity. So that's okay. the, that's the purpose of that memorandum. Thank you very much. Thank It is now 7.50.
and I want to open this to the public, but before doing so, and so I don't forget this time, I would like to read comments submitted uh, in a written form from a couple uh, citizens. First person is Julius Stern. His address is not listed here, um, but these are his comments. As of the beginning of this meeting, I have no stance for or against the proposed variance. I read Connie Boju's post on our Rose Township page and shared it on Friends of Rose Township. I looked at the agenda that I received monthly from the clerk by email and saw the agenda item, then the subsequent comment. I then went to Township Hall and asked for the submissions and was given the 20 pages that I didn't have time to read. I photographed them thinking it would be beneficial, a community service, to post on the two Facebook groups since the township officials don't use modern communication platforms. Since then, I've been exposed to processes and ideas creating more questions than answers. Someone told me there's nothing I could do about the variance, that it is authorized by the master plan, that we paid engineers and citizens to design, but it requires a variance, question mark, that, that, the, master, that <laughs> the master plan copies cost $25 in parentheses is a fluid, ever-changing document. Exactly how many is the maximum number of car that can be displayed in the designated three or less spaces? Someone told me the application will be amended to three or less. Why is he seeking this variance? Is it to secure a license from the state of Michigan that requires a physical location rather than an internet business? Does he have licenses for a 59 West location or a BP location he is affiliated with. I have observed both locations in my normal travels for the last 10 days and there doesn't appear to be any cars for sale at any of the three locations. Will there be a structure erected with there, with there be any work? Sorry, I'm reading it as written. Will there be any work performed at the Hickory Ridge locations from car washing, oil changes, tire inflation, windshield wiper changes, up to major mechanical work? Does the applicant have anything to do with the property south of the BP locations where hundreds of LaFontaine cars are stored in a muddy field? Has Rhone's Township or anyone else investigated the history of business in Highland Township where the applicant has some buses experience? Has anyone looked at the night sky from their home to the corner of Hickory Ridge at and, and M59 where the dealerships are? What are the posted requirements for this variance? Is it 10 days, 15 days, since the hall is open five days a week or five days a week, four days a week or five days a week, or is that seven days a week or 10 consecutive or 15 consecutive days? What happens when a citizen goes to the township to see these documents and is told they are not available? The citizen must write a request, sign it will a phone number, and the township will get back to them about viewing the documents. At least that reduces the number of days of public viewing. Were the submittals redacted at any time? Who redacted them? Were the documents displayed at the counter as required without signing? Why aren't the documents available from the clerk's office? Who decides what meetings the township attorney will be present at? Is there a Michigan FOIA exemption or exemption to public information? Does the township have a written privacy policy? Can I see it? Have all the employees been taught how to comply with the policy? Are documents really available as freedom of information? Or are there legal exemptions when information can be excluded? Are they following a written policy? Once documents are provided, can they be clawed back? So some people have access and others don't. Or once the barn door is opened and the cows are out, they stay out of the barn. What is the legal basis for clawback or change of who gets what? Among the duties of the clerk is keeper of all documents. So when someone goes to the hall, why do they have to go to different individuals' offices to request them when the clerk is supposed to have them for dispersal? 
I have experienced difficulty when trying to call township officials. All calls are routed to the supervisor's answering machine that says she will get back to you. There is a sophisticated phone system that is capable of using prompts to direct calls to the appropriate office. However, individual department numbers must be looked up. Will there be a vote tonight or it will be tabled for a month? That concludes the comments from Julia Stern, dated February 6th. Another um, written comments from Linda Watson. Linda Watson call, I believe. It says, no address. It says, to whom it may concern. Keith Call and Linda Watson Call support Christopher McDonald, M&M, and the special land use for a new or used sales or showroom for automobiles at the establishment of 20015 Hickory Ridge Road. The use is allowed both in the master plan and in the Rose Township Ordinance. The master plan shows the four corners of Hickory Ridge and Rose Center are zoned as commercial. The ordinance states new or used or show I'm sorry, new or used sales or showroom for automobile boats, recreation, vehicles, and farm implements is permitted in C-2. The specific use standard 38-582 parentheses 22 states new or used sales or showroom for automobiles, boats, and recreation vehicles. Use regulations for new or used sales or showrooms for automobiles, boats, and recreational vehicles shall be as follows. A, all lighting shall be shielded from adjacent uses in such manner that it does not project beyond the property line. B, ingress and egress to the site shall be at least 50 feet from a street intersection or adjacent residential district. And C, when adjacent, when adjacent two districts zoned for residential use, those shall be provided a completely obscuring masonry wall four feet six inches in height along the abutting residential district. D, there shall be no strings of flags or bare, bulb, bare light bulbs or flashing illumination of any kind anywhere on the site. So in this case, the person is simply restating the ordinance as it relates to showrooms for automobiles. This was already written and approved by the township way back when. Unless the proposal is asking for a variance that are drastically against the ordinance, this proposal is within the rights of the person requesting it. Linda Watson Call and Keith Call. And lastly, we have a review of the site plan from the North Oakland County Fire Authority, dated February 4th. In, it's uh, directed toward Mr. David Plews, our zoning administrator. RE m and site plan review, used automobile sales. Dear Dave, as a follow-up to yesterday's meeting discussing m and proposals for limited used car sales, I will summarize the key points from the fire department's view. The fire department has reviewed, reviewed the current site plan for m and that requests limit automobile sales at the convenience store and gas station. <coughs> this review identified two issues that need to be addressed. They are listed below. One, the temporary sign located under the permanent sign between Hickory Ridge Road and the fuel pump fuel pumps block the sight lines of drivers exiting the parking lot and entering Hickory Ridge Road north and south. This situation increases the potential of vehicle crashes in front of this business and should be removed or located or relocated to reduce this exposure. Two, if the cars for sale are parked in the area designated as location A on the north side of the building, addition pull steps are needed to maintain the required 20 foot fire lane separation between the north side of the building and the proposed used car area. 
This area of the lot has about 42 foot of pavement leading to the building's north side and if 18 to 20 feet is used for vehicle parking spaces, there is not enough distance to allow customer parking along this side of the building and still maintain the 20 foot fire lane. If this location is selected, it would warrant, it would warrant, would require mounting of signage along the building similar to the ones illustrated below. And these signs state, no parking fire lane. If the south side area designated as location B is selected, there appears to be sufficient space without taking additional measures since there is about 60 foot of pavement on this side of the building. In fire safety, C. Douglas Smith, Deputy Chief, North Oakland County Fire Authority. So with that, I now open the floor to the public. Please, if you would, limit your comments to three minutes. Please not try to engage in debate. Please ask questions, but do so in a respectful manner. And when you approach the podium, please state your name and address. The podium is yours. Jim Cleveland, 12030 Caldwaller Road. Uh, I don't have an objection to the plan as explained. They have several cars. However, as this gentleman said, and I'm sorry, I forget your name, sir. Right. Is he explained? It's not in writing. And I think we need a plan that has every I dotted and every T crossed, everything spelled out in writing exactly what this is going to be. We can't. Uh, make a decision without seeing the plan and I would recommend that the uh, the discussion be tabled until a final plan is presented to the Commission and then we can intelligently review it and make comments about it and that's all I have to say thank, thank you is open to the public. Julie Stern, 1445 Munger Road. Uh, thank you for reading my <coughs> statement. And it's pretty full of questions. Some of them for the township, some are for the applicant. The uh, applicant is a salesman. I didn't hear him really giving the pitch. You know, I've been a salesman and I can give some sales pitches. But leave some uh, questions and something to be desired. Uh, if I'm right, he's affiliated with 59 West and the BP station. And additionally, I'm learn that he's got another dealership in uh, Waterford. So why does he need this license hanging on the wall in this additional location? I don't, I don't get it. If he's already got three other places to sell vehicles, why does he need this, this third location? And, uh, you know, I could go on and three minutes isn't enough, but I'll... And then on the fire report, I'm visualizing the north side of the building and they're going to park cars on the north side of the building facing the old Gibbard's uh, garage. And I'm not a fire marshal, but I guess I'm concerned about cars and the distance these cars are going to be from the, uh, the old garage there. It doesn't seem like that that's... Uh, you know, there, there doesn't seem an adequate fire break there. And I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to be tabled, and I hope I'll get another chance to think up more ideas. 
Thanks. Thanks. The floor is open to the public. Third and final call for any public comment. <clears throat> hearing none, I close the public hearing at 8.07. Yes, sir. The whole emphasis of what his application was is that there was going to be zero change to that property other than there'll be two cars and maybe they park there more than a 24-hour period because they're for sale. Was so it going to change any lighting, any signage, any personnel? Basically, he's going to put the license in the manager's office, which is already existing, and then park one to two cars. Not on the north side, on the south side is required by the fire department. So there's nothing on that side. So the site plan is missing because there's been nothing proposed other than requesting approval to park a couple cars on the site. With my understanding, we'll not have for sale signs in them. They'll just be parked there. So you won't even know they're for sale other than that. Um, I don't think it's the right of the commission to want to know why he needs this and why he can't live on other stuff. He has rights too because it's property and his own property. So if he wants to have it there and he has 20 other places, he still has that right because it's his own property. So, you know, how many he has should come into call. Uh, Brian, do you have any other comments or anything else? And no, I'm happy to take any questions, but I okay. think I've covered my points. And, and for the public, when he enters into this, it will be two vehicles. He sells the property, somebody else thinks they have a Class C license there. It'll be, class, it'll be two vehicles. If they want to have a bigger, they'll have to go through this process again. Where notices will be sent out. Many so he'll be, and future people, if it's sold, will have to be the They get the public he hearing. Whatever he wants. He gets no, no, no. No? Sorry. Yeah. No. <coughs> Sorry. A whole lot of verbal statements <laughs> can be made that are going to be followed through in writing. The, pub, the public hearing is closed, sir. Yeah, Thank no. you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. All right. So I turn it over to the commissioners. Any questions for the applicants, planner? Is this going to be the only place you're going to sell cars? Or are you going to continue to sell them in Waterford? No, this will be the only place. This will be the only place. If I may expand on that quickly, question. Even an online dealer has to have a physical location. And it also has to have a mechanic, but not at the location. It has to be within 10 miles. So there will be zero maintenance, zero oil changes, zero wiper blades. None of that will happen at that location. It, it's, we've talked to uh, a couple guys already in Holly. That will be the, the service repair station per the state license requirements. So just to, I know it wasn't, that was proposed, and it sort of ties into your question. But yeah, it's very, very minimal. <coughs> We had a question about there was it mentions you know new and used cars and you know having a, sold a number of used cars myself I know how that works but are there any regulations if you're selling new that a dealership or however the new part works that that we wouldn't know about that I, I'm not licensed to sell new cars I don't know why that was I mean used car license that's a, that's the word that's that's how it's worded so it's new okay. or used that that, that the, that zone, the, the zoning district it's in allows for new or used, but he's, his class is a class B. Okay, so I just B. remember seeing the new part somewhere. But, I think it's uh, in the ordinance. Okay, it could, it could have been there that I picked that up. So Okay, I just didn't know if there were any regulations that... Uh, so this would be entirely used cars then. Correct. Okay. And then I wanted to clarify the number of spaces. Like in one spot it said like three to five or... 
something like that in another place it said something else um, and right now I'm not finding where I wrote that down but um, I think it was in the application yeah so three to f five cars purchased and then four to five open spaces um, but that wouldn't allow other spaces for other you know what I'm saying that, that kind of doesn't add up <coughs> Okay, so three to five includes the the cars and the parking. Like if someone's coming, yeah. That, so okay. really, two or three actually, actually. So, okay, so two to three cars and three to five spaces. Right. Total. Okay, total. total. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. I may add, Mara, that the, the spots at the pumps are included could be included as parking spots also. Okay. So they got four there. I think you got. And if we approve this, um, does this allow it, it? Does it stay limited, or could the business grow or expand? Depends on the first off the conditions that are put around whatever um, approval. That so I, I really want to caution. The application is the application. The ordinance drives the enforcement. Mm -hmm. As commission members, it's incumbent upon us to add conditions that are not covered within the ordinance because the ordinance is written very broadly and the application itself is not does not state the conditions so approval would have to be including conditions. the conditions so things like signage additional signage the number of vehicles want to be limited that must be part of the conditions be okay with five five designated spots two vehicles on the south side okay. any other questions or comments I don't have any right now well okay is it clear what are you asking for three to five new sales car parking places is it, is it, is it, there's numerous documents you have different numbers Somebody saying two. How many specifically sale car spaces two, two, are you asking for? Two to sell cars, two for sale. Okay. okay. One for Chris to even well, least, okay. One for him and then one for the potential customer. But you have to have spaces there for your store. Oh, there's a, there's twenty or thirty. Okay. Spaces. So this you you're asking for the use of the existing three three no. spaces designated car sales. Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. With with the condition approval and limited it at that, no more. Or whoever well, takes well, over well, this. Yeah, let's, let's get that number clear. Okay. And then you under and uh, you understand that signage is required if you use the north side of the building, but no signage is required if you use the south side. Perfect. Of the building. If I may. I, so I what do you plan to do? Well, I'll use the south side. I don't want to use the north side because it's not. It's not Fine. safe. It's not, I don't. I don't. I, I didn't. I'm glad the fire department came and did their due diligence. The yeah. north side is the safest side in the spot that I would now propose with the knowledge that I don't. That's not a Fine. south side. The north side is not a good idea. Well, let's get it all out so we can get sure. something. And if I may prepared. answer your question about the three to five, I'm kind of a simple guy. It, it, we're thinking that vehicles that will be there with no for sale signs that they said. I did not know that you needed spots for me or people to come in. There's all these other spots there, so that's just uh, common sense wise to me is two spots. It's not when you start adding in the three and the five for you to pull in the park. I have all these other parking spots to look, so if you understand what I'm saying, I, I, a little bit, a little complex when you go that route well to me. So. so, what you're saying is you just need two spots. That's correct. In my, in my mind. Two designated spots. Yes. 
And that's where the cars will be parked all the time is those two designated spots. Yes. I think if everything seems to fit, you know, the the proper, you know, we have the proper zoning there. It's a, an approved, you know, use. Um, I mean, I think uh, if it's the spaces are limited, the, you know, two to five spaces for two cars on the south side. And then um, I'd like to see any updates to our new signage ordinance, that any updates would be a good time to do that. Um, other than that, I think it's it's good. I don't have any questions for the applicant. I think it's 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 permitted. You know, you're going through the proper process, and but I, I know there's <clears throat> there's a lot of work done with the new master plan for the township, and the intent on the future land use plan. I think it's an opportunity. I'm not saying that we can um, enforce certain things, but. Um, you know, we do have a statement that says zoning decisions over time should produce changes that gradually establish greater conformity with the future land use plan. So I'm, you know, when I think of that, I'm thinking they talk about, um, you know, not no light pollution, um, better um, flow between residential and commercial uses. I know that the area is zoned commercial. But if we're looking in the sub area plan, like our township planner was, you know, mentioning, this could be an opportunity if we think it's relevant and if the property owner was willing. So, so in this particular case, correct me if I'm wrong, but on that current lot in that area of which, let's see, that on that southern boundary specifically, there are no light, there are no light fixtures on that. Between your property line and the adjacent home no. to the to the south. No. They're on the building. That's the only living on the building. Canopy yeah. building. Correct. Yeah. Um, all LED, yes, canopy So in keeping with the master plan, they're not adding lights. If they do, the ordinance states that the lighting must okay. be shielded to prevent light pollution. But in this particular case, the lighting is As minimized presented. and it's there is not a request to change that. Reason. Um, my comments have already been addressed. Okay. Thank you, Mara. Mara, anything else? No, nope, nothing else. Darlene? No, my comments have, have been addressed. I mean, it sounds like a very, the cars aren't going, you're not going to have a big for sale sign in the car. Everything is, is going to be done, you're doing it online, getting the customers, and then when you show them, it will be you individually if they come to see the car. Correct. And even to take a step further, we you know, purchase the vehicle, we drive them to their location sometimes. So it is, it, it is that simple. So the gentleman asked the need for the, a physical location is that for the transfer of your dealer license from Waterford Correct. to a physical location? Correct. And just to clear up what the gentleman was saying, uh, in Waterford, I do not, my dad and I did not own that building. It is no longer being uh, used for that. So I've been there, like I said, since 1984. We pulled up stakes and I, it's zoned here. I own, my wife and I own the Marathon store. My family's own a place, as he referred to, as 59 West. It's not zoned there. It's not zoned at Highland BP, which we are tied in with my family business. This business here in, in Rose, which Amory and I own, it's zoned for that. So again, I'm trying to do what's right. I can't hang a license legally at any of those locations. Um, I can hang a license legally here. And I, I run a gas station. I, it's, it is how we explained. Um, it says I'm about a salesman. I, I'm just trying to be upfront and forthright about where it fits in the box, and that's what we're doing. Um, no more, no less. So I just want to clarify that. You mentioned limiting the, limiting, if it were approved, limiting it to two vehicles. That does not, that fits within your business. Correct. 
And as an online business, I'm assuming you have more vehicles in your portfolio? I don't. Um, if I can explain that, it's kind of a secondary business for me. Um, I have my hands full with everything else that I'm doing. Um, so as I receive them, I sell them. I don't have a warehouse or a muddy spot over somewhere where I have 35 other cars. I do not. Um, as I bring one or two here, if they're even here, uh, if they make it here, I guess is kind of a good way to put it, they'll be there. If not, that's all I have. I don't have an inventory or a lot somewhere else that stores vehicles. I'm not that sales guy. So there may be some times when there's no cars there. That is 100% correct. We talked about signage being limited. We limit the signage in the ordinance. Um, what do you anticipate signage? I have been by 50, 59 or 59, West. 59 at Hickory Ridge, the BP there. And there are sometimes I see cars there with a for sale sign on them. Correct. Do you anticipate putting for sale signs on these vehicles at this location? I'll do whatever the township would like me to do. If it's legally, I can tell you, if I, as a use under my license, there is a used car sheet with a as a as is or warranty box that you can check that goes on the window, mm -hmm. the driver passenger side window. There no red and black for sale sign up front. If that's what the township would like you to do, I'm all in for whatever you're allowing me. I guess it's more of a question. Typically, you would put something in the vehicle to show that it's for sale. Sure. If I could do that, I mean, it help. It, it would help me as if someone comes in the store and notices that that vehicle is for sale. Um, if not, then I'll have it posted online or be taking it to an auction, something like such and such. The, the sign that you're going to move from the front. Mm -hmm. you, you said you're going to put it at the, right at the front of the building. Is that going to be an advertisement for, for the cars? Oh, no, and if I can address that, it sounds like that's a, that's a temporary sign that it needs to be moved. I'm all for moving that. That's an informational sign for like when we sell pizza or snacks inside the store at the marathon. Right. Um, if that's township or the fire department moves that as a temporary sign, as it sounds like it looks like, I will move that to wherever it's deemed to be legally put, but it has nothing to do with car sales. Okay. Nothing. And wouldn't be used for that. And further, the last thing within the ordinance states, <clears throat> excuse me, that the abutting properties, if they are residential, that there is a uh, we establish a four foot, four foot six inch wall. The adjoining properties there are all in the commercial zone. Is that correct? So we don't have that aspect to deal with. Within your discretion, or depending on the nature of the business, there could be some discrepancies in there. What do you mean by that? I should, say, I should say that's a requirement, but you may be able to meet those requirements through other means. Well, it's not an issue in this case well, because correct, the correct. adjoining I'm property. Sorry. We should just leave it at that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How, how far back on the south side are you going to put the, the spots for the vehicles? So, like from, for example, from away from Hickory Ridge, maybe as you're talking about working compared, that way. Yeah, compared to the to the back of the lot. Right. Um, I, I hadn't put a lot of thought into that. I would. I mean, it's, 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 it's in line with the you, building. Did you receive them? Yeah. Okay, so you're asking, like, you know, on the south side, if there's 15 spots there, am I going to take them to spot one or spot 15? Right. Um, I, I hadn't put much thought about it into it, but I would. Suppose I would like to put them in the first two spots if they're even there. But if the board thinks I should do something different, I'm like I said, I'm in for either way. Oh, lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further? I just had a question. The uh, the, 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 the metal shows that the, the, the original parcel was split into two pieces, parcel A and B. Uh, this deals specifically with, part of, with the four-acre parcel. Correct. I had to split with the two, which is 20, 100, 019. Correct. Uh, pardon me? 
the parcel. That's, that's the parcel designation. This deals specifically with the four acre parcel. Yes. You do not own the other piece. I own the other piece. Okay, that so, I had so, so, okay. That's, yes. why, that's why I want that clarification. It's got to be only on the four acre parcel. Correct. Which Dave is, has noted as. Uh, 019. Just a minute. Just, let's get the site, site the right thing. Yeah, it's 0621019. That is only the far four acre parcel. There's another eight acre parcel behind that this will not apply to. You said it's not you. It's not you. What, what, it used to be 17. They had some right. concerns with health department issues. They had to divide it off. And when they divided it off, it became 18 and 19, and the front parcel was not. Oh, you want me to put my new well that I installed there 12 acres behind the building? That. So I had to parcel it. So the notices were for the correct part to leave with seven instead of nine on our application. Good. Good. Fine. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Proceed. Take it. Good. 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 Mm -hmm. good. good. All right. So with that, you for a motion to. Approve, approve with conditions, deny. And then remember there are two things here, both the special land use request and the site plan review. So they would be, both would need to be stated in the motion with any related conditions for either. conditions to help someone draft a motion. Is that what Teresa's doing now? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll be limiting it to two vehicles. Yeah. Would be one of the conditions. <clears throat> so I, I would phrase it you know, what, two, two to five parking spaces for up to two vehicles on lot, you know, zero one nine. I don't know the other numbers. On the south side. On the south side. And what about any? I mean, I know we're not, there's not going to be signage for the actual vehicles necessarily, but any other, you know, that sign any signage should be updated to our new ordinance. You know, the updates that we did to the sign. Yes. Would we also want to address the advertising within the vehicle to allow for minimal advertising, minimum advertising, such as the sheet you was describing? Uh, I don't see that it could be a, a nuisance. A really discussion on that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone feel that should be restricted? Just just a sheet. Otherwise, we don't. Just an informational sheet on, on the on the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. We've already addressed the the crazy yeah, balloons and stuff. I, yeah, people like to know what they're buying, so right, I think I, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Sense. yeah. I'm good. So signs we don't read to. Signs external to the vehicle are prohibited. Informational. We're saying, Informational. We're saying signs within the vehicle are all right. Okay. But we're saying anything external to the vehicle is prohibited. Well, not. What what kind of sign are you saying is okay on the inside? What, I'm what, saying we're, what we're saying is just a, uh, an information. informational sheet on, on a on a window on a side window. Okay, then you have to define that. How would you define that, Chris? 
said best and informational, maybe the, what exactly you're looking at. You know, so it's not great. greater, not greater than eight and a half by eleven. Right. If, right. if, yeah. if you want to go on that extensive <coughs> detail, but that it's more or less a, the a sheet that, that, that yeah. you put on a on a new yeah. car. Yeah. That's what, so an eight and a half, you're correct. On a sideways. So you'd have si you'd say, you know, what year the car was and the mileage, the mileage. Uh, yeah. So why don't we say one one sign? In, then, in in sign. information it's sheet. One, information one sheet. information sheet. Eight and a half by eleven in inside the vehicle is permitted. On a side window. On a side window, yep. Mara, just for your the to uh, to enforce the current sign regulations. That's Article uh, <laughs> Roman numeral six, Article six okay. of our ordinances, Section thirty-eight dash four seventy-eight through thirty-eight four eighty-six. So you want to reference the, that? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other restrictions? Um, this is just a question. We we've agreed, and the um, applicant assures us that this is going to be limited to two vehicles. Um, do we need 